Welcome to the Princess and the Bee podcast, the place to be to build your empire as queen of your body, business, and life. I'm your host, Kimberly Spencer, founder of crownyourself.com, and I'm an award-winning coach, Amazon best-selling author, and multi-passionate entrepreneur. Each week, I give you the systems, strategies, and success stories to help you master your mindset, communicate with ease, and triple your productivity so you make the income and the impact you deserve. Imagine this podcast as your weekly spark of inspiration as you take it to the next level with all the bees of your life, body, business, bank account, boys and babies. Let's make it rain. Hello and welcome back to the Princess and the Bee. I am so excited to have you here on this glorious day because it is truly is a glorious day. If you have not looked out your window, I don't care whether it is raining or hailing or snowing or bright and sunny and 72 like it is in California here while recording this. I don't care what it is. It is a glorious day. You woke up today with breath in your body, with your heart beating, with all the things. And I just want you to acknowledge for a second that you are showing up for yourself listening to this podcast, making a an investment of time in improving your life. Because so often as women, especially, we don't really celebrate those big things, those, those things. I was working with a client the other day and she was all into like, I'm just starting my business and all that. But she had actually made sales off of her products, which she has a skincare line. She she had actually made sales off of her products like three years ago. She just kind of decided to play small and shifted and she never gave herself the credit for those sales that she had. And so I just wanted to, first of all, acknowledge and say, you are successful just because you showed up. Putting your success, putting anything out there in the future is a lie of the ego. And so I just want to say today, because you showed up for yourself, you decided to invest time to listen to content that can improve your life. That in itself is a massive win. So I don't care whether you're having the crappiest day on the planet. I had a very, very difficult day the other day. My dad was hospitalized and I, and for very, very good reason, And I said, you know, I am going to invest in myself and read a book. I'm going to invest in rest. I'm going to invest in myself in listening to a podcast that's uplifting. And it's these tiny, tiny habits that you do. They seem infinitesimal, but they make the massive shift. There's a fantastic book called The Compound Effect, and it's how you do the little things. It builds into the big things. So often, though, especially as business owners, we have this perception that we, quote unquote, should be someplace that we're not. And that is the biggest lie of the ego that you could ever listen to on the planet, bar none. You are exactly right where you are, right where you should be, right where you should be exactly right now in this perfect moment. And in this perfect moment, in this moment that we are here together right now, you are listening to the sounds of my voice. You are investing time into your own personal development and self-mastery. Please take a second. Give yourself a pat on the back. Thank yourself. Show yourself some amazing gratitude because you took one little step, but it's these little steps that we take every single day, whether it's waking up uh, earlier so that you can get in your workout or whether it's celebrating the fact that you had a sale of one of your $19 products or celebrating this fact that you had somebody who was really enthralled with your your business and they were like, oh my gosh, please tell me more. All of these little things are necessary to be celebrated because what you appreciate appreciates. That is something I learned from one of my mentors early on, Marie Forleo, the unbelievable, amazing Marie Forleo is what you appreciate, appreciates. So show yourself some appreciation. Show your money some appreciation. Show your body some appreciation. Show your business some appreciation and it will appreciate. 
what you don't appreciate when you start shifting into focusing on who did something wrong or what the the obstacles that showed up in your business or whatever happened in your business or in your life or the transitions and focusing on on the stuff that you're going through when you start to get mired in that it can be a dangerous spiral into resentment into fear into all the lies that the ego would love for you to believe so that you stay exactly where you are. What you appreciate, appreciates. Think of it like a bank. Like when you put money into an investment account or into a savings account, I, like savings account of very small interest, but or into a property or something like that, what you appreciate, appreciates. So like you gain appreciation or you gain like you gain appreciation of money. So your money works while you're sleeping in essence. And if you have a property, the value of the property, you invest a little bit into fixing it up, you make it nice. And that little investment, that little show of gratitude and of appreciation toward the property that you bought, that accrues greater value. So where in your life, where in your business, where in your body are you not appreciating? What about your relationships are you not appreciating? Everything in our life, everything we have right now is a relationship. We have a relationship with our bodies. We have a relationship with our business. We have a relationship with our spouse and our kids and our um, and our business, I think I said business, and our money, we have a relationship with every single thing that we come into contact to. We are literally relating. We have a relationship with our computer. We have a relationship with our phone. Let's assess if these are all healthy relationships. I had a client, and I have been guilty of this myself, especially when I was first starting crown yourself and like I had this blog and I didn't know what I wanted it to be and there were two years in there where I was not really taking action and making it into a profitable business and I started to build up resentment toward my business I started to build and it wasn't even a business like I consider when you when you don't have a business that's making money I consider that a hobby So when you have a hobby that you'd like to be a business, but it's not yet making money and you're investing money into it to make it better, but it's not yet producing profit, some things can come up that are unappreciative, some feelings in that relationship. There is the infinity symbol, which many of you have seen if you watch my live streams, is one of the many necklaces I have. I I love Tiffany's necklaces. And I got this infinity symbol necklace when I was, I think I got it for myself when I was like 19 or something. But I got it because I just felt called to get it. Now, knowing about the laws of the universe, knowing about law of attraction, knowing about what relationships are and how we relate to anything is sort of how we relate to everything. And looking at the infinity cycle of prosperity. So since we were talking about appreciation, like the infinity cycle of prosperity is just look at the infinity symbol. So you slide down and you give, and then ideally that relationship returns on that investment. And it, so you invest time into dating your spouse or your your partner, and then eventually you'd like that return of that investment of a ring on your finger or, or you know, a commitment of a greater value. You invest time into your body. You invest time to work out. You may invest money into a personal trainer to help guide you on how to help your body. You may invest money into a nutritionist or a health coach to help you invest into your body. The problem is, is if you're not on a regular diet of appreciation for everything, then what's going to happen is the flow of energy back to you is going to be curtailed. It's like putting a dam in, in the relationship. 
like and by that I mean like a dam like the 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 one that holds water like a beaver's dam it blocks the flow of the river right so you want in order to have it flow back to you and cycle back to you which is ideally what we want from any relationship especially if it's with our money especially if it's with our business like we want our business to grow we don't want it to just stay stagnant and boring, right? We and we want our money to grow. We don't want it to stay stagnant and like stay where we are. Like why that's no fun. Like I'm going for the jet baby. Like what? I'm like why would you settle for less? And so ideally what you want is you want to appreciate that relationship. The same is true if, if in your relationship with your spouse. So when I after giving birth to Declan, I struggled with some postpartum projections. It wasn't depression. It wasn't anxiety. It wasn't really fear. I mean, it was there was fear for sure, but mostly projections. And this is something that I find, especially with my clients who just get married or they just have a baby, their relationship with their spouse or with their child or with their spouse after they've had the child, after they've had this big life transition of, or even after they move in together, their relationship may commonly, usually I've found in my experience with coaching many people, it starts to mirror the relationship that they saw with their parents. And each spouse is doing the same thing. So each spouse is in some way mirroring what they experienced in their relationship. So what happened after I gave birth to Declan, it was about four to six months after, and I started to build up this like resentment towards Spike. And it was the hardest time. It was honestly the hardest time in my marriage ever. And I started to build up some resentment of like, Oh, why isn't he helping me out more? And I'm like, if you know this man, it's ridiculous, the stories I was telling myself. Because if you know this man, he is the most helpful, loving, kind person. He does all the cooking. But I was building up this resentment toward him because I wasn't asking for what I needed. And so I knew I needed more support. I knew I needed to hire a coach. I knew I needed some assistance um, with Declan so I could grow my business. Problem was, I wasn't asking for it. And because I wasn't asking him for it, and I wasn't stating what I needed, he thought that what he was doing at the level of service that he was providing, like cooking and and watching Declan when when he wanted to, was totally fine. And like, that was totally good. And the thing is, so commonly as women, we aren't saying exactly what we need. We aren't asking for help. We aren't asking for support because we don't want to appear weak. We don't want to appear less than. We don't want to appear like we're not smart enough or strong enough to be able to handle it all on my on all on our own. And I have to say that is absolute 100% a lie of the ego of believing that you're not that goes down to a deeper structure that in the belief that you're not enough, which is absolute and complete bullshit. And so that's why what the only thing that shifted for me and what really honestly saved our marriage because I was I was doing some massive projection and looking back at the story I had created around the quote unquote facts like he wasn't offering to help Declan more it was only cuz I wasn't asking like I literally just asked him to watch Declan while I could record this podcast. He was like, oh, no problem. He's getting his work done. Declan's doing his thing. And I was like, oh, could you just make sure I'm going to go record the podcast? And he was like, okay, super easy. But the problem was, is I wasn't asking for that support. And it wasn't until I had a coach that coached me. In fact, I had two coaches that both said, you got to ask for support. Like, how often are you asking for the support that you want? But I had had this massive projection of resentment. Because I also wasn't appreciating him for the other things that he was doing in in our family and for our family. 
I wasn't appreciating every single voiceover job that he does. I wasn't appreciating him writing his book. I wasn't appreciating him doing all these things, him coaching clients, him going out and speaking. I wasn't appreciating those things that he was doing for us. And it caused a rift in our relationship and our marriage for a couple of months that was really the most challenging couple of months that I've ever experienced because I love that man so much. And Declan loves him so much. And he is a fantastic father. So I challenge you today to look at where are you not appreciating? Because when you're not appreciating, you damn it up. You Like we, I said, you damn up that infinity symbol and it starts to build up with negative emotions. It starts to build up with resentment. It starts to build up with fear. It starts to build up with a story in our head rather than actual fact of what's going on. Because we can have the fact of what's going on. And then we all have our own stories around those facts. So for example, to go back to my relationship with my husband, I there was the fact that I was watching Declan more than he was. That was a time like fact. There was the story that I had built up that he was not supporting me as a parent, that I that he was jealous that I was making more money than he was, that all, and that, that is a complete and utter lie and a story. And that's something that I had to address. I had to look at, okay, here are the facts. What, how can I change this story? And that was one of the powerful benefits of receiving coaching because I, had I not seen that, had I not seen where I was not showing up fully and powerfully as the queen of my life and of the queen of my relationship and of my business, then those negative emotions would have continued to build up and then I would have continued to withdraw emotionally and energetically from the relationship. The same is true with your business. If your business is not reciprocating in the love, in the profit, in the amount of clients or the amount of influence or the amount of impact that you are getting. And if you're like, I should be having, you know, tens of thousands of followers and making tens of thousands of dollars by now, and you're not, eliminate the should because you're just going to keep shooting yourself all over the place and nobody likes to be should on. Um, and then I said should, not shit. <laughs> and then you want to notice What is going right in your business? What are the signs for the things are going right? Because what happens is when you put that dam in the infinity symbol of prosperity, when you dam it up with um, lack of appreciation and then it builds into all those extra negative emotions, it's kind of putting blinders on. Like you put those blinders on and so all you can see are the things that are going wrong. All you can see are you know, the numbers, your your numbers of engagement are decreasing or your bank account really hasn't moved or whatever. You don't see that, you know, Susie had a referral that she wanted to send you, but you just didn't follow up with her. Or you've had this person kind of on the back burner on the outskirts of your your thoughts and you're like, oh yeah, that person works in the industry that I'm, I, I'm looking to consult and coach in. Um, I should reach out to them. Versus, and, and, but if you, by having the blinders on, you don't actually see that. I had a conversation with a client who was a real estate investor, and she was struggling to find an investor for her property. So she would gather, as a real estate investor, she would gather investors into a property, and then she would take some profit, and everybody would profit because she would be the manager, assess, essentially, of the properties. She would manage the managers who would be managing the property. And so she was looking for an investor to invest in this property that she had. And when we were working together, she constantly was like, I don't have an investor. I don't, I, I don't have an investor. Like I do not like, I, I need an investor. This is what I need. This is what I need in my life. Like I, I need this like within the span of two weeks or I'm going to lose this deal. I'm going to lose this property. And I said, what if you had an investor? She's like, that's the problem. I'm like, what if I had it? It would be great if I had it, but I don't have one. And I said, okay, cool. Um, what if you had an investor? She's like, what are, you, what are you going for, Kim? And I said, well, consciously, within your conscious awareness, you currently do not have an investor. 
within your conscious awareness, you currently are not aware of anyone in your your conscious awareness. But unconsciously, what if unconsciously, and your unconscious is tied to higher conscious or to the collective conscious, unconsciously, there is a realm where you do have an investor. On the unconscious realm, you do have an investor. You just haven't met them yet. She was like, oh, really? I said, what if you were to start saying instead, because our language is a command of consciousness itself and our unconscious mind will follow exactly the directions that you give our, our, your unconscious mind. I said, what if you said instead that you have an investor and you are willing to be con- become consciously aware of this person? And just start telling people, I have an investor, and I'm willing to become consciously aware of who this person is. I don't know who this person is yet, but I'm willing to become aware. I'm willing to recognize and receive this investor into my universe, into my conscious realm. So, investor, come into my conscious realm. That's the difference. That's the power of your language. And suddenly within, literally, I think it was a week, she had an investor. After months of searching and telling herself that she didn't have and didn't have and needed an investor. Need only begets more need. Be very, very clear with the language that you use in the commands that you're giving to your unconscious mind because your unconscious mind will take it literally. So, the same is true for your business. The same is true for your money. What if you did, on the unconscious realm... What if you were making multiple six figures? On the unconscious realm, what if you had all the coaching clients that you wanted? On the unconscious realm, what if you had all the sales for all your amazing beauty products that you're selling? What if you had it? You're just not consciously aware of where those sales are coming from or who they are. But why do you need to know? Like, that's the how. That's, that's the, the as, as my coach calls it, the, the hiccup of how. Why do you need to know? Why do you need to know where, where, where those people are coming from? All you have to do is be ready and willing to receive them in the present. Be ready and willing to receive them and shift the language to appreciation, to already appreciating that they are coming into your conscious universe right now as we speak at this very moment, right here, right now. The sales are coming. The money is coming. They are just coming into your conscious awareness. And all you got to do is be ready and willing to receive them. And you have to be ready to appreciate the ones that you already have or the money that you already have, or the business that you already have, or the investors that you already have, or the interest, or the referrals, or the connections. What you appreciate, appreciates. The more you appreciate the ones that you have currently, and if you don't have any sales currently, or you don't have any clients currently, appreciate the ones that are in your unconscious awareness. Not the ones that necessarily you're conscious of, but you are willing Say it with me now. You are willing to become conscious of these people who are eager and ready to buy your products. You are willing to see things differently. That is the key. And then appreciating the shift in what you're focusing on. Appreciating the shift in everything. Because when you start appreciating, you remove those blocks on the dam of the infinity cycle for prosperity, and you allow that glorious flow to flow right back to you. So if you love this episode, please take a screenshot of it and then post it in your stories on Instagram and tag me at crown yourself now. I love seeing when you tag me on this podcast. I love seeing that you're listening to it and engaging and tell me what your top takeaway is. In fact, better yet, tell me what you are appreciating, what you are going to start appreciating in your world right now as you are perfect exactly where you should be. I am so thankful that you are here and that you have invested this time with me. It means so much. And as always, remember, 
that your reign is now. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If what you heard resonated with you, be sure to subscribe and share your breakthroughs and ahas with me by leaving a review on iTunes so I can keep the magic flowing your way. And if you aren't already following us on social media, come experience the extra inspiration and queenly convos on Instagram at crown yourself now or visit our website at crownyourself.com. I am so excited to connect with you in the next episode. And in the meantime, go out there and create a body, business, and life that rules.